to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. First up, we've got the privilege of having Commissioner Doug Howard here. Doug, you're up first. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you very much. I, ho I hope it is a privilege, and I see you got a full agenda, so I'm going to be very, very brief. We like that even better. You I know you do. Way up the list. You know, they tell me the two most important things any elected official can say is in conclusion. Um, <laughs> go on from there. But actually, um, I'm here tonight, not really in my capacity as county commissioner, but in my capacity as the coordinator for Miller Resources for Entrepreneurs at Carroll Community College. We've been making the rounds to all of the town councils, and I just wanted to take just a, a minute or two uh, to make sure that, first of all, we provided with you with some uh, information that we are with everybody. Uh, I'm sure, as you're well aware, <coughs> economic development's a high priority for the county. Uh, it's a high priority for each of the municipalities. And we know that our main streets and our cities and towns are really the greatest incubators for small business in the county. Economic development in the county really centers along two areas. One is the effort that we make to attract uh, bigger companies uh, here, and that's something that's done at the county um, uh, economic development office. But then we also have the enterprise for helping small businesses start and grow. So it's been through a couple of different iterations. About two years ago, it was moved to uh, Carroll Community College under the auspices of the Miller Program, and I'll leave you some information. The biggest message we want to get across is a couple of things. First of all, we do want to support the efforts of the cities and towns uh, and the people that want to start businesses in those areas. Um, by helping them with services that are free. Um, they're available to really anybody that's looking even with just an idea to get started. The second thing is that oftentimes there's a little bit of a myth that that's all we do is that startups is really the primary focus. And actually about 60 to 65% of the businesses that we work with are existing businesses in the county that have been around some for quite some time um, that actually just need a little bit of help in terms of either growing or expanding or dealing with a particular set of circumstances uh, and there's a tr good bit of resource that can be brought to bear in that regard, too. The third thing that I always tout um, as an idea is something that we're able to do, um, but because really Mount Airy is the shining example of it, I'll, I'll rather than tell you about it, uh, thank you for the participation of the businesses here. Um, we also do some custom training, um, sometimes in partnership with the chamber, sometimes in partnership with towns. Um, that we can say if there's an area of need or interest or particular area of expertise that people would like to have brought in, uh, we can do that. And over the course of uh, a couple of months ago, we had four sessions actually right here in this room where we had the opportunity to do that and work with some local businesses on some exciting things that they're trying to accomplish and some ideas and maybe some new approaches on how to do that. Um, the last thing I'll say is that um, later this year in November, we have one of our two signature events it actually will be at Shaladon. Um, it's a program called And Away We Grow. Uh, so it's a, a morning uh, uh, um, uh, event. We'll have Secretary Ree, who's the Secretary for Minority Business Affairs there. One of the things that's really cool about what's going on right now, and we're going to be one of the first places they focus their effort, is that the state is changing the way that it does set-aside programs. So right now there's a set-aside for, and a lot of contracts for minority-owned businesses and woman-owned businesses. And they've decided that really not enough business is flowing to just general small businesses that don't fall into a particular classification. So they're changing the way they do that. And one of the first places they're going to roll that out in detail is going to be at this conference right here in, uh, in the Mount Airy area. So we'll have the secretary out there, some of his folks. We're going to have some of the uh, uh, panels that we're going to have that morning are local service providers and some of the uh, Miller clients that we've worked with. Uh, including the folks from Enter Exit Escape, which I know you guys are familiar with uh, that as well, as one of the uh, really fun things that's not only coming to the area, but a, a business success story as well. So that's kind of what we're up to. We know that as leaders in the community, when folks are either looking to get started in business or looking for areas to grow in, or maybe they've been in business and they're having some challenges, it's not unusual that they would come to uh, you folks for uh, direction and we just wanted to make sure you knew what was out there and that it's available and that it's free or at least free on their end uh, or at least maybe already been paid for is a, a better way to say it um, but that we also appreciate the partnership that we've had in a long-standing way with Mount Airy because uh, you uh, this the town is really uh, uh, very much a leader in that regard in terms of promoting its businesses so that's all I was here uh, all right. to say Thanks, Doug. 
Sure. Go ahead, Bob. Um, we have a few businesses in Frederick County here in the downtown area. Um, is this something that's open to them too? Would you even be willing to discuss it? I would absolutely be willing to discuss it. I mean, a lot of what we bring to bear uh, is more about the region. We also have counterparts there that we could also work with if need be. Um, but um, I won't. I won't tell if you don't. Okay. So, <laughs> if it helps the town, it's you know, it's it's a sort of the rising tide that you know. Um, I, I think it's it's with, certainly within our purview. That's great. Yeah. And Doug, that's good to hear because actually Bob and I met with the Frederick County Economic Development Coordinator, and they also said that they would work with Carroll County businesses because it's more of a regional effort. Uh, Absolutely. If you could tell me, has the county done anything? Have they offered any incentives to any businesses? We were just trying to promote a mom and pop loan to maybe encourage businesses to either locate here or to stay here. Uh, I know there was perhaps a tax break in the county some time ago. Can you expand on Actually, that? Actually, yeah, Carroll County is kind of notorious for not ever really giving any sort of a tax break. Right. They do have some training dollars that are generally available. Okay. Um, they usually go to larger companies, but if there are some things that can be looked at. One thing that folks really are, are unaware of is that there is uh, a Carroll County uh, small business loan program. Okay. Uh, it's a fund of about a million dollars, and it was designed to start because there are a lot of banks out there that, um, but for the fact that it was a startup, might be willing to finance it, but they just don't feel comfortable funding startups. So they have to be someone that's been turned down by their, uh, their bank, and it's not that they're a terrible risk, it's just that they don't quite make it. So it's a loan of up to $25,000. Um, there's a process they go through, they have to get approved. And what it's set up to do is it's, a, it's set up as a seven-year loan so that the payments are low, but it balloons in three years. So hopefully within that three-year period, they build up enough of a track record that they can go to a traditional bank, and we can put that money back into the coffers and, and loan it to somebody else. So, so that Bob, is available. Bob, did you hear that? They have a loan program. Yeah. yeah. Good so yeah, so that's there. So what we do is, you know, just to make sure that everything's kind of very separate, we put them in the hands of the SBDC, who um, the Small Business Development Center, which is a derivative of SBA. Um, those folks work actually in our office. We we co-located it, located a couple of years ago, so small businesses could find all their resources in one place. Um, but they will take them through the process of putting the application together, um, and then uh, you know go through that. Uh, Excellent. Whatever. Excellent. Good to know. Thank yeah, you for being here today. Yeah, and sure. thank you for your Thanks. service to yeah. the town. Thanks, Appreciate it. I'm going to leave these with you. Uh, and right. if there's ever Please any questions, do. You but, leave them on uh, the yeah, table? November 3rd at Shavodon is a way and away we grow. So Actually, I think you may good. want to leave them on the table in the back so people can, can pick them up as they go well, out. Well, if you could just leave a few because yeah, I yeah, want to make sure I get one. For us. So. Okay. But we'll, people we'll do always. Do don't listen to Peter. Do both. I'm going to stay out. I promised if I was allowed in District 4 tonight, I'd stay out of the controversy. I have to be very careful. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We Thank appreciate you, it. Right. Thanks, Commissioner. Thanks, Thank you, Commissioner. I got it. All right, up next we've got approval of the minutes. There's actually three sets of minutes to approve. Um, I had emailed out a slight change to the closed minutes. Did you see anybody have any? I, I mean, saw it now, It was just a minor grammatical change, really, to clear it up. Okay. So I will move we accept all three sets of minutes with my one amendment. I'll second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 That was unanimous. Up next, I uh, don't see one of the troopers here. So we'll skip the trooper report. Uh, Chief, you're up. Good evening. Um, I'm going to keep my report brief this evening as well. Um, it was a pretty busy month for the police department. We had several events that we uh, were assigned to for security purposes and so forth, one of which was the fireworks on July 3rd. I think we did a pretty good job there. We were able to move a lot of cars out of that area in about an hour and 15 minutes. So uh, I think that was a pretty successful night for, uh, for us out there, as well as the also had the uh, Fireman's Carnival that we worked at uh, for the week. Uh, in addition, we've uh, hired three new officers for the department. And we would like to welcome uh, James Brooks to our department from the Tawny Town Police Department. He was a sergeant up there and supervised several officers. He's also originally from the Mount Airy area. Uh, he, had gradu he graduated from Ligonore High School. Uh, we have Mike Ginevra, who retired with over 20 years of service with the Baltimore Police Department. Uh, he worked out of the Northwest District, and he has an extensive history in narcotics enforcement. Um, and we also hired uh, Christian Mirados, 
Medeiros, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, he's former Baltimore Police Department and has worked a couple years with the York City Police Department, and he has an extensive background in patrol work. Uh, so they started with our department on July 24th. Uh, right now, uh, they are currently going through two weeks of in-service training. Um, basically, uh, with all that involves, it's, it's, uh, they've gone through five firearms courses through, that are MPTC uh, re required and uh, conversion over to the Glock 17 pistol as they might have used different firearms in their training with their various departments. Uh, they're going through LEMAC, CPR, AED, uh, radar, LIDAR training, uh, sexual assault investigation, financial crimes, victim witness training, uh, constitutional law updates. Uh, we've also had a segment of uh, instruction from Pathfinders for Autism, uh, which was very good, and um, they actually had, a, had a, actually learned a lot from that course. And there's several others, and we've had a host of instructors coming in from Westminster City Police and the Carroll County State's Attorney's Office and so forth, and they will end up completing the in-service training by this Friday, so that'll be our last day. Um, this, uh, the Mount Airy Police Department headquarters pro uh, project is moving forward. It continues to progress. Uh, there's been some delays in construction. Uh, the tar targeted completion date was August 24th, however, we're a little short, short of that. Uh, so it's gonna be a couple additional weeks to get some things done there, and, and it's near completion, so she, we should be moving into our new home in the very near future. Uh, and finally, the CAT RMS project, uh, we're working still with the county to get all that up and running uh, for our records management system. So we'll have a way to, to write reports and so forth. So that's basically my report for the month. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Any questions? Scott has several, but they're not related to you. Okay. <laughs> well, bef I guess before we meet next time, you guys will be rolling, right? Next time, well, the plan is, is, is after we get our in-service training done, we're, the plan is to ride with the field, the troopers for a week to get to know the area and to interact with the public and find out where the problems are and so forth to educate them, get them familiar. And after that, we're gonna roll into a support role with the state police because we still don't have a way to write police reports in, in a records management system until that's all up and running. So for the month of September, it's gonna be a lot of support for the state police, helping them out with calls, being their backup. They need something, we'll, we'll help them out. Um, and then come October 1st, when they roll out, our system should be all in place and we'll be ready to take over. Sounds good. Could I ask a favor, and I thank you for explaining that here at the meeting, but for the couple of people that are not watching tonight, would you mind distilling that down and maybe putting it on your police blotter on Absolutely. Facebook? Right. And it sure. doesn't have to be detailed, just because people ask me all the time, where, where are we at now? Okay. Maybe you can say we're going through the training processes. A lot of these people have right. to be certified in the way that we do business in Carroll and Frederick counties. If you can just put that out there, and then we're going to do ride-alongs in September, then October we're fully taken over. Just so people know what's going on. And also, sure. as far as uh, the new officers, I think I stumbled on them one time, and that's fine. But I think he came in here the first day that we're here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. but would it be possible maybe at the next meeting? I, I know it's difficult to get them in at night, but it would be nice for the councilmen to actually meet them. And right, that, that was my plan to bring them in in September. That's September's fantastic. So we bring them in September, them. introduce them to the council, and introduce right. them to the public. Absolutely. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks. Uh, Better Volunteer Fire Company. I don't see any of the regulars here, so I'll assume we're probably worn out from the carnival. A few too many uh, fried Oreos. Uh, <laughs> Them or you? <laughs> me, me. <laughs> okay. I think that was Peter. Let's move on to uh, community concerns, citizen comments. This is a time we set aside when if there's any topic that somebody wants to address the council on, this is your time to do it. Um, if there's something that's on the agenda, that you want to discuss, you may want to wait till that comes up, or you may want to mention it now so you can get out of here. We'll kind of leave it up to you. Uh, anybody who wants to speak, I'd ask that you come up to the microphone, identify yourself, and if there's more than one person, just kind of line up on the wall. So is there anybody who's got anything they want to address the council on tonight? Nobody. Heather? I had to be one. I was saying nobody? <laughs> wow. That's okay, Heather. Good evening, Heather Hobbs Michael, 1919 Reading Court, Mount Airy, Maryland. Um, just very quickly in reference to the discussion tonight regarding the ordinance um, for introduction, I think it's 2017-8, right? Um, regarding basketball, basketball hoops okay. to an arch crossing. 
Um, just to give you all an update with our HOA, where we stand with that. Since the last time I stood in front of you, you may have read the awesome article that Samantha wrote for the Frederick News Post that made the front page that was outstanding, featuring a lot of our student athletes um, in Mount Airy that you all should be very proud of. Um, just to clarify, though, on July 27th, I received an email from Meredith Medschalt, I think that's the correct pronunciation, from Property Management Partners, who is the HOA management company for Twin Arch Crossing. And she wrote to me that the board will not be installing a basketball hoop in any part of the association. We are working to better define the current regulations on play equipment and the storage of it. Um, I just wanted to let the council know that the HOA is not offering any solution at this point. So therefore, to speak back to my point from last month, um, the dire need that the children are in for some type of amenity on that side of town, and the HOA is not willing to move forward to help us with that. Okay. Any questions? Thanks. Mayor? No, I think Larry's charging forward. With, he uh, has been. I think he's got a supportive council and mayor behind him. So, But thanks okay. for the update. Thanks. Thanks. All right, moving on to Ordinance 2000. So assuming there's nobody else out there. Oh. Carl, come on. Hey, Carl. Hey, Pete. Um, my name's Carl Munder, 2002 Field Brook Lane, Mount Airy, Maryland. I just want to say, uh, give a shout out to Ashley Collier. Collier for the wonderful job that she did during the. Um, Where's she at? Sorry, Ashley. Right here in the front. <laughs> Sorry for the. Um, Fourth, not for the Fireman's Carnival Parade, and it was very nice that you left the town hall open for the bathroom access because I know several little kids actually used it and some parents did too, so thank you. Thank you. And thank you for noticing it yeah. is the people's house. We yeah. try to open it as much as we can, and you may not have noticed, but I believe we had music piped down Main Street. Yes, we did. For the she first was. time, we're trying to get the most out of that, that too. So whenever nice. there's an event, we'll open up town hall. We really need to get a better signage for the restrooms, but. Thank you for noticing. Oh, you're we are trying to do that Thank more. You. Ashley always does a great job. I'm going to give her yeah. a round of applause. All right, anybody else? All right, Ordinance 2017 8, budget amendment um, from Park Reserves for basketball court and backacre. This is here for introduction. Larry, you want to introduce? Yeah, I'll introduce it. I'll we second. Do that. <laughs> Done. It's seconded. Uh, what we want to make sure that everybody knows is if you want to discuss that topic, Larry wants you to show up at the parks meeting this month, uh, which will be what day? Well, uh, parks meeting, we're going to continue the conversation about it, uh, but it won't be the official public hearing. Uh, so this will come up next month. I'd like to have the public uh, meeting, public hearing at the September Parks and Rec meeting, if that's okay. Well, uh, being an ordinance, it doesn't, it doesn't require like something dealing with zoning, a separate right. public hearing, but certainly we'll be open to, it'll be on the agenda so yeah. people can come talk about it. I, I think the uh, mayor we, was interested. Well, I just want to make sure we post it. Yeah. I very much want to post, and then we're going to do some notices to the townhomes that are closest. There's only a few that are getting close. So what do you think is the best time to well, post? We'll make our recommendation, uh, have this final discussion about exactly where to put it in at the August Parks and Rec meeting, and then- Do we have time to get some signs made up for that so we can tell people if they want to come out and discuss it? Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss offline. September 11th. Okay. Yeah, our meeting is late. All right, Larry, let's you and I work on okay. the best time to post the property. We want the public to be aware. I don't see how anybody can be against it, but they may have some concerns with the place. Well, and, sure. this, and this is going on town property, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's yes. going on town property. We do have an opportunity to talk to the developer of the future Brittany Manor right. And, right. and see if there's something we can coordinate as well. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it, nice. The plan is for it to go in we're next to the soccer field we already yeah. have. So we already have facilities right. there. Our, our goal is to provide the amenity without penalizing the current soccer right. players. Right. So. Cool. Okay. Well stated. All right. Ordinance 2017 9, MDX zoning. This is here for introduction and to set a public hearing. Uh, Want to do that on September 11th? Planning. Well, I. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I will. You get it. You want to introduce, and I'll second. Um, yeah, why don't I introduce and you? And, and I will second, so we can get it set. Um, this, is, this is something that the planning commission has been working on for five years, and it's finally coming to the table. Yep. And it's a good what kind of time thing. you think we need? Think seven o'clock? Five more years. It's you know, <laughs> I, I would think seven o'clock would be sh surely be enough time. 
Oh, Heather's not here. I was looking for her to yeah. nod her head. Well, I do know this. Um, she's not. She's. We, we spoke earlier. She's nodding from Westminster. Yeah. Okay. The, the plan. The plan is actually not for it to be voted on that night. Right. But for whatever comes up in the public hearing to go back to planning again before it comes back to us again. Planning well, would like the opportunity. So planning to wants. This is basically an airing for planning. Address you know any any council issues that are there and any public issues that are there. It's, it's very unusual, but probably we good. want to make sure we yeah, do this right. Yeah, I would right. agree, It'll because I think a lot of the discussion centered around people that were potentially developing through Center Street right. and whatnot, right. uh, but this is for the public, so half right. an hour should be fine. Okay. 7 o'clock, Debbie? 7 o'clock. good? I'll Thanks. All right. What Resolution 2017-4, authorized consumption of alcoholic beverages. This is for the Celebrate Mount Airy. Uh, I will move. We accept the resolution. Have okay. a second. Any discussion? Was that you have a discussion, or were you seconding after, or you were thirding? All right, what did Larry second? No, I I Scott did. got I, it. Oh, Scott I was, was quick. I was thirding. <laughs> Scott was quick. <laughs> I was thirding. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this is, in the next one, um, a little over a year ago, we changed our ordinance that when Main Street is closed off down here, you can actually be out on the street with an alcoholic beverage or things like the beer festivals and stuff because it's kind of hard to have. Um, microbreweries out on Main Street and not actually be able to drink anything. It just didn't work real well. So we actually changed our ordinance, mm -hmm. but it requires that we pass these resolutions every time in order to allow it to go. And we have to, and we have to stay within certain boundaries. Yeah, and they oh, bound, yeah, yeah. They it's, bound it's, it with cones and, 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 and you get tagged right. and you get the whole night. It's not like anybody can wander around It's down very here. controlled. It's a very controlled thing, but it's basically it's to, right allow these, it's to allow these events to take place. Uh, all in favor of 2017-4 say aye. 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 That was unanimous. 2017-5. Uh, this is the same thing Second. again for the beers, 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 beer and brat. Were you seconding or firsting? Second already. All right. I'm, 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 I knew you were going to I'm entering. Scott seconding. Uh, I, I like the whole second. All in, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Didn't we end up talking about passing a different ordinance at one point for the process of bringing, you know, when we have events like this that uh, we don't have to go through the votes all the time. It was more of a streamlining uh, the process. Yeah, it was more of I, I town staff. I vaguely remember something. We, we, yes, and, I, and so do I. But I think with what we've learned recently, something different. Oh, that was for the, when we so had the we beer garden on private the property. For right. private property, not that lifted the requirement for resolution okay. from you all because it's on private property. Um, but still, we retain. And, and I, I, this is from memory. We may need a resolution because the county may require it, don't they? I, I can't remember. I, I yeah, remember I may, I, you I may, that does retain. sound familiar. Yeah. Yeah. If it does, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. For their so you, you know anything to the contrary, uh, That's fuzzy memory, but. Um, so the way our, for, our current code is written, we would have to pass a resolution. Correct. Every does the every county day. require the county that, though? <laughs> okay. So we have to submit the letter of the resolution every time we go to the county. Now, right. if you want to change the town code, I think Dick had brought this up um, at the last time about maybe we need to tweak it on the day the town supported events are, are included or however you want to tweak that. And that would get around the resolution, the vote yes. every time. Yeah, although the resolution is so not a big deal. I'd recommend Just like closing the streets. Streamline but the process. Dick, did you want to speak on this? Even though we passed both of them already? Uh, yes, this did come up about a year ago uh, with the uh, issue of having the, the town pass a resolution every time you had one on private property. That's you know, public property. Right, it was the beer garden, which was on private property, was uh, the issue. And uh, Amethyst is correct. Uh, you do need one for Carroll County. What I don't know, and I don't know if you know, Amethyst, if a similar event were on private property in town of Mount Airy on the Frederick side, whether that requires one or not. I, that's the unanswered question. You have to look at Frederick County. Frederick County side. Yeah, you would have to ask like, yeah. whatever there. Right. Will okay. Well, so for now, we're, we're clear for Celebrate Mount Airy and Beers, Beard, and Brats. Okay. Up next, 2017-10, budget amendment for the train station interior mm -hmm. renovation. That is here for introduction. I will introduce, do I have a second? You have a second. Got a second from Bob. Just so you all know some of the history on this, it was before the council last month. Uh, Barney and I were not comfortable 
with the bids, me more so. Uh, I was not comfortable with the price of the bids, so we put it back out on the street. We put it back out. I wanted to make sure that local small vendors had an opportunity to bid. Uh, and they did, and one did come in as low bid, and they are qualified. So, and Barney was able to cut out some of the cost requirements for bonding that we really don't feel is necessary. So that dropped the price. So what you see in front of you, although we feel it's still high, it's the best we can do. Now it's somewhat odd in that we've got the ordinance tonight for introduction to be voted on next month, but yet we have the bid package to be voted on right, I don't think this month. on the bid package if we haven't heard the ordinance, right? That's my question. Is there an ordinance that needs to take place? It's a budget amendment, sorry. It, it's a budget amendment, uh, which is an ordinance, Yeah. which we would either have to pass as an emergency measure tonight, Barney? Oh. I don't, I don't have anything uh, okay. more to say. But, but what I'm saying, because we, we, we have the approval of the bid. All right, um, so if you did want to do, I don't like the word emergency. It's uh, more than urgent. That's what the code says. I don't like says. that word emergency either. But that's what I it know says. you don't. Okay, especially when I don't know if there's the emergency, any hurry. the first time we get an opportunity to look at it is when we're sitting here looking at all of you. Yeah, so Barney, is there really any urgency? I know we have several members of the I'm Historical Society. Wait, I, I will withdraw my concern as an emergency, but I just want everybody to know that this, this is concerning when we do this. And thank you for all the attention you pay to me when I, when I get mad. And we're going to catch a rash every time. Uh, there's members of the Historical Society here. I know we want to do this right. I don't know that there, Barney, is there any urgency? I don't think there's urgency, but, uh, you know, I think it's more of a timing issue. And uh, the fact that we had money budgeted, it went back because the turning of the year and now we're asking for that money back. Okay, well maybe I could ask a better question than that. Has the council had a chance to review and are they comfortable with the bid? Are we one council in short? Although that's, no. that's a different question. Because they're two separate items. There's the bid, which we can approve, right. and we can approve the bid, and, but as it's scheduled now, which what I'm trying to get at is the ordinance to fund the bid is currently scheduled to be voted on next month That's, I unless we want to bring it up if as you're emergency. comfortable with the bid i think the other one falls the other fault yeah but if, if you're not comfortable with the bid so wait. so to be fair a jason's not here b the fact that we're just seeing it tonight and if we change whoever the bid is i would recommend since barney said it's not an emergency we wait until next month that way everybody can get a chance to look at it i wouldn't vote for an emergency okay then 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 we're then we're decided doc I'll would that you. be would, would weather be a concern of delaying this for by not doing an emergency? No, it's, I mean, it's all interior renovation, so, okay. so weather. Good point. This is a good yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, it's a good point. All right, well, then this, is the, this will be on for next month. Weather may be for, a concern with basketball court. It might be. Yeah. Quick dry concrete. All right. Okay, up next we have recommendation for award for construction of the interior of the train station. I suggest we pass this till next month because we could vote on I thought on that's what we just yeah. did. No, what we just, what just went to emergency? next month was the ordinance. Oh, well, yeah, if we don't have the budget, yes. Correct. That yeah, was the whole reason. Yes, saying. agreed. We, sh we, should, we should put that together with the ordinance next month. All right. Yeah, that'll, that'll go next month with Sorry. the ordinance because if we... You know, don't if we happen. don't choose the bid, then we don't choose the ordinance. If we don't choose the ordinance, we don't choose the bid. All right. Uh, recommendation for award of the external auditing services. Um, that was passed around to us all today. Debbie, I didn't print it. Is, did I get a? I read it. Was there? A, well, was there a copy left here for me? Yeah. That's the printed one. Okay. Thanks. It's in our packet. It's got the yellow on it. How was it in my packet? I got my packet Thursday, and this wasn't released. Really was Maybe it was added today. Agenda five times on Friday. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. Uh, but I, well, I did read this this morning because it was emailed out. I just mm -hmm. didn't print it, assuming it no, would be here. We have copies. Okay. Uh, sure the recommendation was RLH CPAs, uh, CPAs and business advisors. Um, uh, I have my understanding from talking to the mayor that this is his recommendation as well as staff's recommendation. I, Scott. I will. So, uh, Want to move we accept it? Move that we accept uh, uh, RLH. Any discussion? All right. We oh. noticed the significant savings from the last several years. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm sorry, you that? Uh, I seconded. Scott moved it. Thank you. 
That's good. That was one thing on tonight's meeting that absolutely had to be done tonight. Yes. Done. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, up next, Parks and Rec manager hire. We've got the resume from a Sean Byrne. Um, this would be the recommendation for this since it is a management position. It goes to the council. I know staff and I think the, the mayor went through this. Uh, I will move the yeah, Also, we, yeah, I had Larry Hushauer yeah, sit in on it. Okay. I, was, I wanted to, Larry, what was your impression? Uh, guy's outstanding. So, uh, right. Sean has a uh, uh, good background, uh, especially with scouting and um, uh, and uh, familiarization with, uh, he's been working up at Fountain Rock uh, with Frederick County for a while, doing the uh, nature part out there. I think he brings a lot. Um, uh, to the uh, to the town and we emphasized the uh, main thing I emphasized to him was the ability to collect data and actually turn it into something useful for us because we've been collecting data for yeah. years and years and never turned it into something useful this this guy will be able to do that so All right, well first off I've moved it Larry you want to second it second okay Scott only question I have what, what was the requirements for this management position and the reason I ask is because <coughs> I mean most of his experience looks like recent 2016 to current and you know stuff before that he I mean he did some stuff for historical society and marketing yeah but that was it I don't see any anything else we could get really you the qualifications but I mean if you guys thought he was fun then that's, yeah. I'm just asking yeah, the question type of when questions I look, it's that, like well when I he's got a year and a half yeah we attended the effective meetings class and this information was readily available from staff for the last month if who, yeah, this this? yeah, any information you wanted, we sent out and asked you if you needed any information. It just helps the meetings go by quicker if we address these sooner. But uh, we have the qualifications that we put out, and we can get them for you if you like. What I have currently is the, uh, uh, is the uh, job description for it uh, that includes the requirements. So that's, that's what he was interviewed based on. Okay. So, and... Uh, yeah, when it comes well, to any personnel stuff, you can up, always, up you can to always the ask Holly. And if you go by her office, she has gum. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will defer to the mayor and staff for the process of hiring an individual. If they feel they're qualified, so be it. All right. So we've, we've got a, Thank you. a mo mo motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That was unanimous. All right. All right, acceptance of stormwater management easement for Sterling Glen phase one lot 78A. Uh, Tom, this is more than yours. 78A, 142 and 143. Basically, on uh, each of these properties, I believe, are going dry wells. The county, in order to sign off on the subdivision plat, I believe, and allow it to be recorded, requires uh, the granting of a easement to the town to allow town access to those dry wells in the event that the town needs to do so to assure that the maintenance that each of the owners have undertaken uh, has in fact been done or to uh, repair as the case may be uh, any failing system uh, and just for the public this is basically a standard thing we do yes. in developments when we take over their stormwater management ponds uh, i will move we accept um, the deed of easement and maintenance agreement I have a second? Second. Mary, any discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous to yeah. me. Larry's going after the fishing rights in there. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is the PWA. So uh, there's um, Pine Grove. Yep. So uh, Heather's not here, but basically um, sometime back the town council um, a couple of years ago, I think, took up and uh, I think approved uh, a PWA essentially for the same property, but with the prior owner. It's now been deeded to um, For All Developers Inc. Uh, and uh, so this is the, the prior PWA was never signed or recorded. Uh, so this is now. Um, uh, up for uh, reconsideration because some of the numbers have changed and obviously the developers changed. So essentially you'd be approving in essence the same PWA that you had approved um, a couple of years ago. What's different is is that uh, you've got a different developer 
and the numbers are, are different. Why didn't it Slightly get different. Why didn't it get signed a couple of years ago? I don't know. Um, Mr. Thompson maybe can answer that, but I'm not certain. Um, I think so. This this off Main Street, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Right. Right. Top of the hill. That little. You see the sign showing the little lots up there. Ron Thompson, Van Mar Associates, uh, for the developer and previous owner. Uh, simply that it was approved, but the previous owner was unable to get financing. This is Reverend Martin's property, right? Right. Okay. Was unable to put the financing together. Gotcha. To move forward. So Frawl picked it up. What is the purpose behind the public works agreement? To, as far as the uh, the sub development, that's already approved at the grandfather. Yes. Because we don't even so allow handle lots anymore. But that's well, that it's it's a, it's a cul-de-sac. Yeah. It's lots off a of cul-de-sac. There's no. It's a public street that they'll be constructed. So it would be a public street. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. All right, I don't know whether I moved to accept this, but if I didn't, I am. Uh, do I get a second? I got a second from, I assume that was Bob, right? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous? All right. Street closing for Celebrate Mount Airy and street closing for Beers, Beer, and Brats. I'm just going to move those two together. I move we accept both of those street closing requests. Do I get a second? I'll second it. Looks like Scott seconding. Any discussion? I mean, it kind of goes with what we voted on before. Pat? Discussion, yeah. <laughs> um, we've been having a series of meetings and some concerns with downtown merchants, some pros, some kind, regarding street closures. Uh, just a quick clarification. I'm going to go into some data we, we research. Uh, Amethyst, to celebrate Mount Airy, is that, is, what, what date is that fall on? I'm Okay, what date is up all on? That's going to be on August 26th, the so last Saturday of the month. It's a Saturday. What time are we closing the street? We're closing the street at 4. So we're closing it later in the afternoon. Okay, to my knowledge, we only have two street closures in the town of Mount Airy for the chili cook-off and for the beards, beards and brats. During the day. Two day closures. Okay, just for everybody to know, in comparison, Sykesville has five closures that's over double what we have just so people know and as far as smaller closures which we'll have occasional for the, the parades and whatnot and usually in the afternoon and they're short I believe Sykesville shuts down every other Friday they shut down a block or so every other Friday so when you look at street closures I know it's a concern for some people but in comparison we shut down very little I just wanted to make that distinction no, and get some good. clarification and street closing starts at four right Correct. I'm just putting that on yeah, my so calendar that's not well, like the Santa Parade is 5 o'clock, I think. We Those are all evening closures. Yeah, it's but an evening full closure. Full closures, we only do two in the time. Right. And we used to, with the May and Spring Fest. Two days. You do two days, yeah. twice, right. all day long. Yeah. So twice, twice we rarely, if you, if you look at that, if you really get the facts, and sometimes people, we don't deal in facts, but we wanted to look at this factually. If you look at it factually, we close down very little. Right. So come out and support those events, please. All right, so um, I've got a motion, we've got a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Looked unanimous. All right, let's move on to the mayor's report. Well, some... hold on, let me see if I got my response. That's my phone. Let's try to steal it again. Okay, I was, uh, there's something we should know in town, it'll be in my final report. We had a winner for the Miss Juvenile uh, Majorette. Hold on, come up. Uh, the Miss Junior Majorette uh, Championship, she was the grand national winner. She lives here in the town of Mount Airy. She is going to represent the United States in Norway in the uh, oh, international competition. She's going all the way to Norway. And what's her name? I Oh, my goodness. Her <laughs> father's name is Charlie the DJ. But uh, I'll get her name in my mayor's report. And I'm so sorry I don't have her name. Uh, her name is Kim, and I can't think of her dad's last name. But Kim, congratulations. Uh, your full honors will be noted in my mayor's report. But I just want the citizens of Mount Airy to know we have, an inter we have a national winner that's going to represent uh, uh, USA in Norway. Also, uh, once again, you know, trying to work on the parking issues downtown. We just added up to 10 to 12 spaces. And this is in addition to spaces we've added earlier over by the rail yard. And Larry was very 
active and supportive of that, and uh, I think we just had it all striped out. Uh, so again, we, we keep adding municipal parking spaces. We're finalizing uh, the lease agreement, which will eventually turn over to property acquisition over by the plumbery, which will net us uh, another 20 spaces. 20 spaces. So you know, very soon we'll add 30 some spaces, and we're also looking at the bank. We've uh, we've opened up some of the spaces at the bank. Thank you, Rob Scranton, and, and or Kim Schultz is her name. Kim Schultz <laughs> is her name. Thank you. Uh, and we're opening up, we're looking at opening up even more spaces at the bank. So things are really happening as far as parking. Even while we're waiting to the downtown master plan, we're adding parking every month. So it's something to, to, to be happy about. Uh, and that is it for my report. I do have a series of reappointments. And just so you know, uh, a couple things are happening. Uh, one, I am going to look to start a new task force for the downtown, to redo the 2007 town survey. That gave voice to over, I think, 40% of the town responded. We're going to look to do that again. Uh, is it 40%, Bill? 44%. That is huge by survey standards. But it's been 10 years, so it's time to do another survey. There's been a lot of things happening in town. We want to get the pulse of the community, so look for that task force to be formed. I am looking for some people that are on current commissions. I'm looking for some reassignments for them to help take over this uh, undertaking. So look for that to be coming up in the future. But for commission appointments, uh, I'm going to read the list. I am recommending Scott Chiricchio uh, to be an alternate on the Planning Commission. I am looking for Kevin Jackson to be reappointed to Board of Appeals. Beverly Blatchford reappointed to Beautification Commission. Pete Ballas reappointed to Recycling and Sanitation. Michael Van Sant to be re reappointed to Economic Development Commission. Joy George. Guevara. Thank Guevara. you. Guevara reappointed to the Board of Recs and Parks. Heather Hobbs Michael to be reappointed to the Ethics Commission. And Dick Swanson to be reappointed to the Ethics Commission. I will move we accept the recommendations. Second. And my last. We've got a second. Well, we oh, still got sorry. a vote oh, on it. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. And as I posted today, uh, one of the things I learned when I went around the town is that there's probably 300 different no solicitation signs out there on people's doors. And I just thought, you know, it'd be really nice if we had something standardized. Because a lot of times, and I get the reports firsthand when people call and say there's door-to-door -door solicitors and they videotape the solicitors. I see the conversations, the interactions. And a lot of times, the solicitors simply do not know that it's a town code. And they're not clear where our town borders are at. But I just thought it would be a great idea to have one standardized sticker that shows consistency. And when they start seeing these all around town, I think they've got the message that it is illegal to pedal without a proper permit. So these are going to be made available. They actually cost the town about 80 cents a piece. They're going to be available free for town residents only because they only apply to the town. Uh, you'll be able to get them from your friendly neighborhood councilman or from town hall. And they'll be accompanied by a sheet that will list uh, all the, uh, the people that are exempt, such as the fire department and the Boy Scouts, because there are some exceptions that people should know about. But other than that, there's uh, quite a detailed process to go through and get a peddler's permit. So they're out there, they're on their Facebook page, website, and the councilman will have them, and so will Town Hall. That concludes my report. All right. And, and if you're on the council, you get these extra secret gold ones. That's, that's a win the gold prize if they go to your house. Well, that's because we can actually ticket them when they come to our door. You could, and there's only seven <laughs> of the gold ones made. Starts <laughs> I've never written a ticket, but I know that I have the authority to do it. Yeah, so the council, uh, mayor, uh, and actually Diane Gleason, she helped with final design. All right. Seven of those. Okay. Uh, beautification, parks, and rec. Larry? All right. Um, I start off by saying thanks for the shout out about the uh, parking, but Barney Quinn and Brian Johnson had more to do with it than I ever did. I just advocated for it. And there's an extra ADA spot out there now. And there's, right. going be, there's going to be another one by Ben Gu as well. I yeah. Didn't get parked, so seniors so that, were looking so out that for was you. awesome. So thanks, Barney. So, uh, Parks and Rec, uh, we had two movie nights that both got rained out, uh, Field of Dreams in Greece. Uh, but there's a reschedule on St. Andrews for Field of Dreams. That'll be on August 25th. Camp night is August 19th in Watkins Park. That's a chance to go out as a family, spend the night test your kids, see if they can last on uh, one night in a uh, park. And if they do, then you can take them somewhere else and, and uh, take them out for a couple of days. Um, 
they're going to have inflatables and we have a new grill for the town that was paid for by the uh, summer passport sponsors that amethyst set up so uh, good job on that the movie at camp night's going to be finding dory and uh, this year because we moved it back to august 19th uh, we are actually not able to bring slim harrison in so what we're doing is creating a campfire songbook and some amateur guitar players are going to show up so if you got a guitar stuck in your closet come on out to the uh, campfire and uh, sing along and uh, and we'll give that a shot for a night uh, the ambassadors challenge was a huge success uh, over 200 people came out and ran for that one benefited the michael j fox uh, foundation uh, galatians 6 2 uh, they have a run uh, coming up on september 2nd uh, same location same course all the benefits for this one go to the Mount Airy Net, and it's being held by the Mount Airy Baptist Church. And to get to uh, sign up for that 5K, it's www.imathlete.com, which most of the people who run around here are familiar with that site. Uh, Beards, Bears, and Brats, October 14th. All the benefits from that will go to Ava's T21 Foundation, and they are targeted toward an inclusive playground uh, in the area, in the region, so that kids with disabilities and others can play safely and have fun in the same environment. Celebrate Mount Airy, August 26th in the evening. The caboose is gonna be open during that entire event. Uh, something came up at the Parks and Rec meeting concerning ATVs. I just wanna emphasize on beautification and for Parks and Rec, there's uh, no group support for ATVs in parks at this time, per the code. Uh, we had one resignation, uh, Robert Stridle has moved on, uh, leaving an opening in Parks and Rec. Beautification, uh, met with the chair at East West, East West Park to discuss the plannings along the nature trail that the LDS uh, elders have been helping to uh, uh, bring back up to speed. That leads to Windy Ridge Park. Uh, so we're trying to get people all the way around that nature trail again. Uh, they're working on uh, walking and hiking maps for the town. That's still in work, so I think they're gonna start on the Frederick County side looking at uh, trails available uh, currently. Uh, trash mob was discussed since Jason's not here. I'll just tell you again, the Mount Airy Trash Mob's doing some great work. They do uh, second Saturdays in the morning. They go around and pick up garbage at different locations on Facebook. Just put in Mount Airy Trash Mob. Uh, still looking at uh, the benches for the downtown area, uh, in particular over by the caboose and the train station. And uh, there's a swinging bench that has already been received and they're setting up to put that in Prospect Park. It's the same type as the one that we have at Wildwood Park. And finally, uh, we, we lost, uh, not, not lost, Dwight Mullinex decided that he uh, could no longer serve on the Beautification Commission, so we have a uh, opening there, and I really appreciate uh, what Dwight's done over the last several years. Uh, um, you know, very much a, a thankless guy who goes out there and just, you know, does work for the town uh, with no expectation of thanks or anything. So that's that concludes it. Thanks, Thank Larry. You. All right, um, EDC planning. Bob? I'm going to keep mine real short. Um, the MHD was introduced tonight, and that is a major accomplishment that has been so <coughs> been the focus of this planning commission along with master plans and everything else MXD's always been going in the background um, so this is a major accomplishment. And now that's pivotal in putting Center Street through. It is it is pivotal it is pivotal we'd, we'd like to see that sign just as soon as possible. Um, we have a sign ordinance workshop or sign ordinance work session this Monday this Thursday August the 10th 6 to 8 p.m. at Town Hall we're trying to this is another thing we're trying to get done simply you know it, it's been out there for five years six years yeah, yeah. a long time <laughs> yeah we've, passed um, we, a few we've pieces. tried we, we've tried everything and so this is this is going through um, next commission meeting is August the 28th which is a Wednesday at Town Hall um, let's see economic development the farmers market is here every Wednesday 3 to 7 p.m. in the municipal parking lot, and it's working out very well. The, the vendors seem to like the parking lot, and, you know, Ashley, Ashley and, uh, what is the other lady's name? Alice. Yeah, Alice. Ashley and Alice are, are doing a great job with the, with the uh, farmer's market, and Manza, Dick's always here working his butt off. Um, 
Let's see, the Economic Commission work plan is something that um, Economic Development is working on. There'll be something about that later on. Um, the Town Commission Information Exchange. Um, EDC thought that it was just so interesting that there are so many things that Parks and Rex is working on at the same time that other commissions are, are in, parallel, in parallel avenues, you know. So it's, it worked out real well. Um, I don't know if I told you last month, Don, Don Marie Needle was recently elected to the chair of economic development. Sean Gratton is the secretary and will serve in her, in her stead sometimes. Um, and I think that's it. Let's see. The next meeting is August the 23rd at 7 o'clock at Town Hall. Did you want to mention something about Bill? Because I know you were very excited about Bill putting that event together and all we learned from that. Oh, the information commission. exchange? Yeah. So it it's is. the first year Bill could actually be there, and he put it yeah. together three well, years ago. I think, yeah. Well, longer than that. He, yeah. The first year he put it together, he, he calls me and he said, uh, he said, Heather's running things tonight. I've inadvertently stopped at the hospital, and they're not going to let me out. <laughs> But Bill, then, Bill was able to make it, and I tell you, the result of that joint commission meeting was outstanding in that we did find out that we were working on several projects, and it really just helped other commissions save time and have a better understanding. Because sometimes the town council looks at things collectively, and when the commissions are making their recommendation, they only look at their window. Right, right. And the town council maybe will go with a different decision because they have to look at budget, they have to look at how it interacts with other commissions. Well, this gave a better understanding to all the commissions to how the overall process works. Absolutely. So, Bill, thank you for putting that together. Yeah. Huge yep. success. Yep. All right, can, can I ask a question? <clears throat> uh, farmers Market, uh, now that the parking lot's done, is there any intention of coming back down? Do I need to staff I think I think Ashley would be or? more, in, in my conversations that I've had, people seem to like it up in the municipal lot a whole lot. Uh, we're going to, that's something that I'm going to work with Ashley on. There is some concern to bring it back downtown. Okay. I mean, this is really, we should support downtown events. It is somewhat removed up there. Uh, uh, there's some finessing that needs to be done, and we have to be careful, you know, how we handle. But ultimately, I think, I personally think it's better for downtown to have it down on Main Street and to have it maybe spread out through Main Street. So I'll work with Ashley to find out some of the players and how we can do that without jumping back and forth too no, much. Good. Yeah, that was one of, the, one of the issues I've heard from talking to people up there is not so much up there or down here. It's starting down here, moving up there, and then moving back down. You have like to watch Moving that. three times in, in a year. Can Did you have an issue. opinion on that, Councilman? Yeah, it, it'd be nice uh, now that the parking lot's done to come down and at least give it a shot again, uh, maybe at the tail end of this farmer's market season and, and just, you know, give it, a, give it a test run down there. I'd be happy to go and dig up some volunteers for the caboose and uh, open it again. So uh, uh, I think it'd be nice and, and informative to get it back downtown and, and see how it feels for next year. I mean, that's yeah. lots downtown. Down yeah, on Main Street. It's, it's somewhat removed. We really want to accent the businesses down here and to get people moving down here. And that it's somewhat removed up there. I'm not saying it's a bad place. And it served its purpose until, you know, but All right. there's pros and cons to both. Jason, since uh, Jason had a conflict, we'll jump over him. Streets and Roads, Scott. Okay, Streets and Roads, we didn't have a meeting last month. Um, our next meeting, which I announced at the last council meeting, is going to be the 24th of August. Uh, it'll be 7 p.m. here in Town Hall. And the one comment I will make, I actually made to the mayor, is uh, if anybody's interested in volunteering for Streets and Roads, we do have openings. I would suggest reaching out to the mayor. We'd be more than happy to discuss those opportunities with you. And that concludes my report. All right. Water and sewer. Um, our big discussion were, were really two topics. One, we're waiting. We're glad that audit was approved because we're kind of waiting for the auditor to do all the stuff so we can yeah. see what our numbers are so we can make a recommendation one way or the other as far as water rates. The other one was uh, we discussed the tower in light of the fire. Um, Barney had indicated to us that the two towers one and two did reasonably drain down together. There's an issue with bringing tower three into that mix because there's some, uh, I think it's six inch line in the middle of the 12 inch line. It is six, isn't it? It's eight. It's eight, okay. But there's a much smaller line between here and there, which when Center Street gets upgraded, the anticipation is we need to upgrade that to 12 inch. So we think that will substantially help the issue. Um, and we also is going to become standard here now. Yeah, right, right. And we also, um, you know, looked at the idea of, well, do we want to upgrade that tower, you know, tear it down, build another larger one. And our, our real thought process was that we 
based on what recommendations are, we have more water in the air than is actually recommended for a town our size. Um, once we get that line fixed, that should bring all three towers in fairly equally, so it should balance the system better. So we really kind of going along with the Barney's recommendation is to just basically rehab the tower that's up there. Um, that avoids the price of a teardown. It avoids the price of possibly having to get a much bigger piece of ground and moving the whole thing. Because and we need to that paint the towers. Separate subject. Um, well, they have been going through that maintenance. The Tower 2 was done a couple of years ago, as I recall, and Tower 3 is new. Okay. Um, so we're going back to the oldest tower and going to fix it up. Okay. The oldest one they tore down. Yeah, that's true. The oldest one got torn down. Yeah. So, so that, was, that was our discussion. Our next meeting will be on 9, 6, and 7 here. Uh, Monica, you got anything? Yep, I do. All righty. <laughs> okay, the temporary police station is nearly complete. Interior finishes and furniture should be in place in the next week or so. Potential move-in date for our officers is mid-August. Um, there's going to be a two-month transition period between August and September where our town officers will be working with the Maryland State Police, um, and our force will be fully operation, operational on October 1st. Design is progressing on both the stormwater management pond projects in conjunction with the stormwater remediation program for the state of Maryland. Uh, we anticipate the engineering to be completed this summer for the Marydale Garden Storm Pond with possible construction for the spring of 2018 for renovation and construction of the new pond design since there's federal and state permits that are required for that project. Uh, we also decided to install neighbor slow signs in one of our subdivisions where there's a high level of children playing. We hope to make some progress in raising awareness of the very serious dangers of speeding within neighborhoods That's where there's uh, high levels of kids playing and numerous co common open play areas. Um, the final RFP for the downtown master plan has been advertised. Bids are due by the back by the end of August. We are also able to advertise this project on the National American Planning Association site at no cost. So we're hopeful to get several qualified companies that will be able to do a great job for the town on this very important project. And we have had lots and lots of interest on this project and companies from all over are, are interested in, in bidding. So that's great. All right. yeah. Thanks, Thanks Thank Monica. Good report. Tom? Other than the things I'll cover in the closed session, uh, most of my work has been devoted to the MXD ordinance and finalizing that for introduction tonight as well as uh, certain changes that I'll be recommending um, in consultation with Rob Scranton to the uh, ordinance 2017-7, which is his text amendment to create uh, a mixed use special exception within the CC district. All right. Uh, 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 Larry, Larry and I have a concern. <laughs> You know we're going to ask about Wildwood and ask you oh, sure, just yeah, provide absolutely. us an update because I know so Earl Henderson's are watching, out there Jack watching. Helen's watching. <laughs> so is <it's> Roger. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I understand it, that's being slated for uh, September's meeting to hopefully uh, be before this body to approve acceptance of the stormwater management facility that they've petitioned uh, the town take over. Um, they uh, have given us in various stages signatures uh, that have over a period of time crept toward and hopefully now uh, subject to our further review uh, exceeded the number they need to have under their bylaws they must exceed 66 so hit 67 okay. percent um, uh, I have not seen the last round of signatures which came in maybe a day or two ago something like that she's going to email me the stats that i need to check the right positions. so but suppose but we've gotten emails sort of advertising what we're going to get so okay. if what has been advertised we in fact get uh then what we would the last part of it is is that we have asked for the state uh, sdat printouts for each of the properties so that we can verify that the people who signed it are in fact the owners Okay. Um, as reported to us, we're supposed to get the SDAT printouts uh, within days, I gather, uh, from an email I think we received today. Uh, and town staff will uh, verify those. But the point is, uh, bottom line, if all that checks out, they should be in line to have this approved uh, in September. Once approved, as we have told them, they will need to prepare a deed, special what's called a special warranty deed, to the town uh, for the stormwater management facility, which um, 
I, off the top of my head, I'm not sure whether it's a single parcel or whether or not it's a part of a larger parcel of common area. And if it's the latter, then they're going to need to have a, uh, you know, surveyor come, go out with a meets and bounds description suitable, you know, to our liking. But anyway, that's that's the status update. Okay, thank you. Have we uh, let their management company know or let their vice president president know? Yes, I believe that she's been in contact okay. with. Uh, and so I think it's important to know. I know Larry's been getting a lot of uh, emails. I've gotten a few. I've been working with Mr. Henderson. Great, great. Just that I think in theory the town council has agreed to take over the pond, but as you can it's see, it's just a matter of getting it, getting the paperwork it's done. It's got paperwork. It's got really, to be it's right. really their HOA requirements state to, to turn it over. They got to do a bunch of things. So. Right, and that's we why we can't need, do anything about that. That's why you need 60% of the owners because it is an HOA yeah. situation as opposed to a rental. But or what, a, what right. was important to Larry, Larry and I, if yeah. I could, what was important to Larry and I is that they understood the process because sometimes it just gets frustrating when you don't know. So thank you for that detailed explanation. It's coming. Thank you. Yeah, and there's little details like the owner of the property. Will you go over there and you know? husband will sign off on the petition but the wife didn't and when you pull the deed they're both on it so that's that's the way their bylaws that's your are number. written <clears throat> each house is a membership for each lot so uh the way their bylaws are written uh if there are two owners two owners got to sign and in many instances we had one owner sign so in certain instances we'd go back and say okay well it, you know why didn't the other sign and in many cases they came back and said we've got the new signature here so we've got to match that up in some instances the you know it might be a spouse who, who is now deceased and now the the sole owner has in fact signed we just didn't know they need to produce you know, a certificate right or yeah. at least provide some level of proof you know an explanation explanation yeah. So yeah. it's a more comp. It's not as easy as just matching up right. a couple names. Yeah, and the holdups actually is not our end. The holdup is their community bylaws, which require them to jump through these hoops right. to, to get us to take it over. And I'm not well, sure they were all aware of all. The yeah, business. exactly. That's the purpose of this discussion. And now that I'm, I'm in it, because I wasn't in it. Debbie's on top of it. Okay. She, I know she's been talking about it a lot. Okay. All right, we've got the code enforcer report. Uh, is there any other business? I will move the bills be paid. Do I have a second? I see Bob's finger there. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, I'm going to move. We enter into a closed meeting uh, for acquisition of real property and consult with staff and individuals about pending litigation, the, the three items listed on our agenda. And I will also move, in addition to that, that we adjourn as soon as that closed meeting is done. Do I have a second? Whoever. Uh, I'll get to Bob. Bob. Okay, Bob's got the second. Okay. Um, where are you in favor? Aye. Scott, you're Aye. in favor. I'm in favor. Bob, you in favor? Aye. Okay. Just for those of you who don't know, when it comes to closed meetings, I'm required to go <laughs> and ask everybody individually. So we are now, we'll enter in a closed session in just a minute as soon as we get sorted out. And then we'll be, just, then we'll be um, adjourned after that. Good question. No, no. Peter, great, great job. That was great.